Hello and um, thank you for joining us for today's webinar. As we run through an overview of the proposed rental form changes, my name is Lynn Smith and today I'm joined by my colleague Sam Gaylor. Morning Sam. Morning Lynn, uh, welcome everyone. Before we start, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners on the land on which we are hosting today's webinar and where you are joining us as well and pay our respects to Elders past, present and emerging. Today's webinar has a lot of information to get through as we look at what is scheduled to take effect on Ascent and then also what is um, on proclamation. Our aim is to help you understand what is in the bill for the proposed changes. If you do have any questions, you can submit them through the chat function. However, please note, depending on the time, we may not be able to get to answer your individual questions. Um, but we do know that um, other people may have some similar sort of questions. This actually helps us look at our future content for our website, such as our frequently asked questions. So um, if you do have some questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. But again, it just depends on time if we can actually get to that before we finish this morning's webinar. If we look at the role of the RTA, our role is to administer Queensland's tenancy laws. And we do that through many services at the RTA. Um, that's our contact centre, our bond management, our free dispute resolution service, and our compliance and enforcement actions. We do not write the laws. And our role is to help you and everyone in the rental sector understand the laws and the rights and responsibilities under these laws. We know there's been a number of changes to the legislation over recent years. So let's have a quick um, history lesson here. So we have the Housing Legislation Amendment Act 2021. That was passed in October 21 and started with the domestic and family violence changes. It also introduced in October 22, um, we saw changes to end tenancies, uh, renting the framework for renting with pets and repair orders, as well as some other main changes. September last year, we had minimum housing standards for new tenancies and we have minimum housing standards for all tenancies uh, from September this year. So if I just quickly touch on minimum housing standards and Sam, I might just get you to put a little link in the chat about minimum housing standards. It's just to remind you that the rental properties do need to be safe and secure. So when we talk about that, we're talking about waterproof and structurally sound, in good repair, free of vermin, damp and mould, your functioning latch or lock is fitted to external doors and windows, and also window coverings for privacy. The other part is the reasonable functionality components as well. So please do jump on our website for more information or as Mark will do is send through um, a link in the chat. Earlier this year, Queensland Government released the Homes for Queenslanders plan and that had five pillars. And one of those pillars was the support for Queensland renters. So before I keep going on what is in the proposed changes in the bill, if we do take a step back to last year, the 2023 consultation on stage two was rental law reforms. There was an options paper released with five key legislative reform priorities. And there was also the discussion paper regarding the annual rent increase frequency limit and ensuring that actually had effectiveness in the sector. On the 21st of March this year, the Residential Tenancies and Rooming Accommodation and Other Legislation Amendment Bill 2024 was introduced into Parliament by the Minister for Housing and proposes to amend the tenancy laws. Remember, it's a bill, it's not law and has to go through that parliamentary process. So the slides that I'm going to go through today is just an overview only of what's in the bill. It's not thorough details and we will have more information on our website and more resources once we know what has been passed. If you would like to know more about that parliamentary process, um, the bill and also the explanatory notes, I'll get Sam to... Um, drop in the chat um, a link to our website um, as well as the link to the parliamentary committee site as well. 
So with the legislation changes, there is on assent, which means that certain changes will apply straight away on this date. And then there is proclamation, meaning that it will have a later date to commence. The proposed changes do impact your general tenancies, such as your houses, units and your townhouses. And for rooming accommodation, it's boarding houses, student accommodation and your supporting accommodation, as well as movable dwelling tenancies, so your residential tenancies in your caravan parks. So what we're going to do is start on what is going to look at taking effect on assent. So starting with rent um, and rent bidding and agreements. So some of the terminology and wording has been changed in the bill. And one of the example is regarding rent bidding relating to a person rather than using the words of lessor or lessor's agent or the provider or provider's agent. You'll also find that several sections relating to roomier accommodation have been changed to align with general tenancies. And this includes roomier accommodation must be offered at a fixed amount and an increase in penalties for not having a written rooming agreement. So just to clarify, there is about, um, I think it's over 140 sections of our Act have penalty provisions and noting that in this bill, this brings some of the increases in some of the penalty amounts um, or additional sections have been introduced with penalty provisions as well. Rent bidding is unlawful in Queensland, so properties must be advertised at a fixed price, and that is current law. The new proposed changes now do add a person cannot solicit, invite or accept an offer of rent for higher than the advertised price from prospective tenants. Penalty units have been added to this new section. The other change is the maximum rent in advance to be four weeks rent for general tenancies and two weeks rent for roomy accommodation. Now, Sam, we know that this was also in the explanatory notes, um, the intent in behind these particular changes. Yeah, so, um, I mean, really, it's, uh, it's about making the rules the same for everyone uh, in the application process. So for rent increases, we know in 2023, the minimum period was changed from six months to 12 months. The bill proposes a change of 12 months to be applied to the rental premises, not the tenancy or the rooming agreement. The minimum period applies even if there has been a change of managing agent or owner. And furthermore, public and community housing are exempt and the details about the exemption can be found in the bill. RTA forms will be updated to address the new changes and this will include the general tenancy and rooming agreements. Written agreement must state the date of the last rent increase and there will be 40 penalty units applying to that section. However, agreements entered into prior to the date of the assent are not subject to this requirement. A tenant may also ask for evidence on the day of the last rent increase and the property manager or the owner must provide this within 14 days of receiving the request. So the bill provides examples of what the evidence may be, noting that any personal information about another person, such as like the previous tenant, must be removed or de-identified. So the examples are including a copy of the previous agreement, uh, rent increase notice, or a copy of the rent ledger. So Sam, there are maybe other evidence that might come into play, but however, what happens if there has been like a change of owner when they've made that request to get this information, say from another agent or owner, if that is unsuccessful? Yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a really good question. Um, obviously, uh, if the owners have changed um, or the, you know, the agents have changed, the current owner or agent will be doing everything they can to get that information uh, to be able to provide that evidence. Uh, if that's not able to be provided, the tenant does have the opportunity to submit an investigation request through to the RTA uh, and potentially the RTA can then um, be involved in, in trying to find it. You could probably argue that, um, you know, looking for evidence of, uh, of the rent increase side of things, the fact that you can't actually get hold of it, 
um, suggests that there's a bit of an issue there. And I just noticed too, we've got quite a few questions coming in just to clarify here to Sam, um, that tenants wanting to elect to pay more rent in advance where the proposed changes do say that not to actually accept rent in advance more than what's going to be required. That's correct? Yes. Yeah, that's correct. So the uh, the um, Act, uh, the reforms as it's being uh, put forward, says that uh, you can't accept more um, than, uh, than that four weeks amount. Great. So just continuing with rent increases, a, a property owner can actually apply to QCAT for permission to increase the rent within the 12 month time frame because of undue hardship. Um, it would be up to the owner to provide evidence to support their case. In the proposed changes, it does state in deciding the tribunal must make must have regards to any representation made by the tenant in relation to affordability of the premises and the ability to continue to pay rent. And also to just clarifying for rooming accommodation, the rent increase does relate to rent payable, not a service. So Sam, on this particular application to QCAT, that's a non-urgent application? Yes, correct. So um, to be able to apply to QCAT, uh, you would need the notice of unresolved dispute from the RTA. Uh, so you'd submit a dispute resolution request through to us first. Great. So borders and lodges are not covered by the RTA, but if a bond is paid, it must be lodged. And this extends to also include where an owner lives on site and rents out less than three rooms. There's also another change in relation to a bond dispute. If a bond dispute is dismissed or withdrawn from QCAT, then the RTA can release the bond as per the original request. And there are also some changes to Department of Housing bond loans and also commercial bond loan providers. And just to touch on domestic and family violence, we know that back in 2021, uh, the domestic and family violence provisions, which allowed um, a tenant or resident to end their interest in the tenancy. There are some word changes in this particular section, as well as an increase in confidentiality regarding the relevant information. So Sam, I might just get you to put a link in the chat. So information about domestic and family violence and the process, um, including a flow chart, can actually be found on the RTA's website. For caravan park providers and tenants, there's some clarification around the time frame to end a short tenancy due to the end of the tenancy period. Notice can be given at any stage during the short tenancy or the extended period. However, it's two days for a notice to leave and one day for a notice of intention to leave. And it's not to end the agreement early but, um, it's or during the tenancy, but at the end of the base or the extended period. So it's just putting a clarification around a time frame. And what we also see in the bill is an update on goods left behind and undertaking reasonable efforts to contact the owner of the goods. So this is, would be the former tenant or resident. This change is looking to remove the promotion of an auction of the goods in a local newspaper, which we currently have had for quite some time in our legislation. And it's updating this to a more modern time to now include phone, SMS and email, emergency contacts and also online newspaper. But please note that this does not remove the process required to store the goods for a minimum period before selling or disposing of the goods and the process about the condition and the value of the goods is still relevant. So for general tenancies, um, if the goods are over the value of 1500 and for rooming, it's over 600 So if if it is under these amounts or there's a health or safety concern, then they can be disposed of. And again, as always, best to take photos, document the contents and the, and the information that you have there. And remember, personal documents do need to go to the public trustee. 
Just a few other changes which are about, which will be scheduled for on assent um, include the ending of a tenancy due to the termination of a community title scheme. So this is dealing with the updates um, to the changes of the Body Corporate and Community Management Act. So this is when a scheme is terminated. So it reflects to units and your townhouses with a body corporate. We know already that we have rules for entry for general tenancies regarding entry for maintaining smoke alarms. This has now been extended to rooming accommodation. So for student accommodation providers as well, there's a change in some wording to end the tenancy due to the entitlement to student accommodation ending. So that's been changed to be terminating the agreement rather than notice to end the tenancy. There will be three heads of power to be established. A head of power will allow for the creation of a future regulation. So this has to occur within two years and meaning that a future regulation is going to be there relating to a portable bond scheme, a code of conduct for the rental sector, as well as modifications around safety, security and accessibility. So establishing this on assent, but the full details as to how and what this will look like will come at a later date. So what we've talked about so far is what we know will start on assent. So once we know um, what's happening with the bill as it progresses through Parliament, then we will then know that starts on assent. But what we also have in the bill is we have what will be the changes starting on proclamation and that's to be a date to be announced. So I will run through just an overview of what we know is proposed for these changes down the track. So the proposed changes to take effect on proclamation include a tenancy application um, that must be in an approved form and the option available to submit other than an online platform. There'll be types of information that can be attained from prospective tenants and they will be prescribed. So in other words, the legislation will state what can or cannot be requested as part of the application process. So remember, owners and managers are looking at the ability for tenants to maintain and care for the rental property. They're also looking at the ability to afford and pay the rent and also to, to clarify tenant, applica uh, tenant identification. The current legislation does list ways on how a tenant must pay rent. So on proclamation, a tenant must be offered at least two ways to pay rent, including a way that does not compel the tenant to incur more than usual bank transfer costs and is reasonably available to the tenant. Any financial benefit that an owner or a manager may receive from payment options will need to be disclosed. The maximum bond amount to be paid will be four times the weekly rent amount, no matter what the rent amount is. We know currently if the rent is over $700 per week, the bond amount can be negotiated and be a higher amount. This will change upon proclamation to be a maximum only of four weeks. It's reasonable costs regarding lease break situations will be replaced with reletting costs and it will outline a maximum cost that is calculated on the remaining time left on the agreement and also to whether the term of the agreement is less or greater than three years. Other changes include the process for requests for fixtures and structural changes, and that will add a time frame in for owners and managers to respond to tenants' requests. There will also be protection of personal information and a time frame for owners and managers to destroy documents, and that's going to include information that's collected from prospective tenants, as well as tenants and residents in a tenancy. The ability for the RTA to share information with the Office of Fair Trading. So this will align and relate probably more to the real estate sector. And we know that providing false and misleading information has penalty units in the legislation. And the wording is extended to include the authority, which means the RTA. So this will mean that there will be penalty units for providing false and misleading information to the RTA.
We know the quickest way to get a bond refund is an agreed refund and good communication is key at the end of the tenancy if there is a problem to try and resolve it amongst each other. We encourage tenants and property managers and owners to continue to work together to resolve those disputes. On proclamation, where a claim on the rental bond or a dispute request on a bond claim has been made by the property manager or the property owner, they will need to provide evidence of the claim to the tenant within 14 days. And again, this section has been um, has penalty units attached. There are changes to notice periods to enter for reasons such as showing a prospective buyer or a prospective tenant or doing maintenance. So those 24 hour timeframes have actually been increased to be 48 hours notice. Your routine inspection time frame does remain the same. There's also changes to limit the entry after a notice to end the tenancy has been given. So whether that's a notice to leave or a notice of intention to leave, it will mean that there'll be no more um, entry more than twice in a seven day period. While the changes are in the time, there are changes in the time periods, the ability for the tenant and the property manager or the owner to mutually agree for entry still remains. So with regards to services or utility bills, such as like your water bills, the property manager or owner will need to provide the bill to the tenant within four weeks after the owner receives the document, unless there is a reasonable excuse. If the tenant does not receive the documents within the required time frame, then they do not need they do not need to pay. The same time frame for the tenant to pay the bill of one month still does apply. So as you can see, there are some immediate changes versus changes that will happen down the track on proclamation. So what's next? So for just some key dates, we know that feedback on the bill has closed and that there was a public hearing with the parliamentary committee last week on the 29th of April. The committee is due to table its report on the 10th of May, which is tomorrow. The next step, once we know more and the bill pass, um, does progress through the parliamentary process to assent, we will keep you informed as to what that information looks like. Remember, until the bill passes or is rejected, it's business as usual with the current tenancy laws. I know we've just gone through a snapshot or an overview of the proposed changes and the RTA will have more resources available soon on our website and more so when we know what is being passed. So do keep an eye out on our website. Our forms will also be updated. So it's really important to understand that. So to make sure that you are using the latest version of our forms and that does include the tenancy and rooming agreements as well. So I'm going to end the webinar now. Thank you, Sam, for joining me this morning. Thank you, everybody, for joining us online to go through the, an overview of what is in, the, is in the bill and what the proposed changes are. Again, as soon as we know more, we will keep you all informed. So do keep an eye out on our website. Uh, the webinar will now close and a quick survey will pop up. We'd love to know what sort of topics you would like to know more about. Um, if you wouldn't mind um, just quickly completing that survey, that would be great. Thanks, Sam, again, and I'll close the webinar. Thanks, Lynn. Thanks, everyone.